Gospel reading for this morning comes from the book of Luke, the fourth chapter. Then Jesus began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built so that they might hurl him off of the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The good, then bad, then good news of Jesus Christ. Grace, peace, and faith be unto you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Father in heaven. Amen. Good news is bad news is good news again. That's how David Jacobson from Boston University School of Theology describes this passage. And I think there's also a book by that same name. Good news is bad news is good news. It's kind of like Jesus is taking off a Band-Aid. You know, you just got to rip it off quickly, get it over with. Or for me, I was thinking about when I I drink a smoothie. You know, I make these smoothies in the blender. I love to drink smoothies. Every day, you know, put the greens and the fruit in there. It's just an easy way to get your fruits and veggies that you need during the day. But when you're done with it and you have that glass and it's all filled with the stuff on the edges that you can't get down, it's better to just wash it immediately than let it sit there and then it gets all crusty and gross. Just even if you're going to do the full washing later, just at least wash out the inside. I kind of see Jesus is doing that a little bit here. I mean, he sees all these people, and he just was preaching in the synagogue, and he was so amazing, and they're like, wow, this is great. One of our own people is a prophet. This is amazing. This is going to be such good things for us. It's going to be amazing. But Jesus knows he's got to get something out of the way first. He knows that they're not ultimately going to really like the message that he has to share with them. Because he has to share this message that God's love is for all people. That means even people that I consider to be enemies, God is going to work in their lives, God is going to bring healing, God is going to bless them, even if I don't like it. So he tells the story of this this guy named Naaman who was from Syria and he had leprosy and so he went in and he heard that there was a prophet in Judea and he goes and talks to Elisha and Elisha says go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River and you'll be healed. And eventually he does go and do that and he's cured of his leprosy. And then you have the story of Elijah going to visit a woman, a widow who is from another land and God brings healing, God brings salvation to that family in their time of need, even though they were outside of Israel, outside of the chosen people of God. So the message sounds great at first, but that, then it starts to get a little difficult. And maybe that's where we start to back off a little bit. Maybe we're feeling God's call in our lives. Maybe we're feeling that tug on our hearts. But then we say, well, God, who am I? Who am I to be sent out? Kind of like Jonah when he was sent to the Ninevites. 
And he did not want to go. He went the exact opposite direction because they were his enemies. He did not want to preach God's forgiveness, repentance and forgiveness to those people. And uh, Jeremiah had a similar problem. Thank you, Angela, for reading from that passage this morning. He knew, I mean, if you read through the whole book of Jeremiah, he has this message that God has given him, but he knows that it's not a message that the people really want to hear. They want to hear that everything is hunky-dory, that everything's going to be great and wonderful, and that's not the message that God gave him. So he is also worried about this. He says that he is just a boy. Who is he to be sent out? And I think this is interesting in this passage. It says that, that God reaches out and touches Jeremiah on the mouth. It says that I've given you words to build up or to destroy. He's given him his message. He touches him on the mouth. But that same word that is translated as touch here in other parts of the Old Testament is also translated as to strike. Like uh, one, one place in particular in the book of Job. I don't know if you've read the book of Job recently, lately, but his whole house gets flattened by a wind from God. You remember that, how his whole house was destroyed? And at the word that is used when it says the wind of God touched his house is the same word that's used right here. It just strikes him. And so I had this going through my mind this week when I was thinking, you know, Jeremiah's kind of getting whiny and he's complaining, oh, who am I, who am I? And God just says, be quiet! You know, gives him a little... Maybe, no, maybe not that serious. But, but the point is that sometimes our interactions with God aren't always completely loving and caressing. Sometimes it can be jarring. Sometimes it can be difficult for us to hear and to feel, especially when it's not something that we really want to hear. Or maybe we're just afraid to really talk about our faith with other people. Afraid to share what God is doing in our lives. So we kind of back away from that. It, or it's just too difficult. It's just outside of our perspective on life. But even so, being outside of our perspective, we're called as Christians to continue to love others with humility, no matter what. In one of Paul's letters, he says that right now we see only in a mirror dimly. Right now, we don't have full knowledge. We don't have full prophecy. But he says that we'll know fully later, just as God has fully known us now. And so while the message can be difficult to bear, it is indeed good news for us. Because let me tell you, from the perspective of the people in Jesus' day, basically all of us are outside of the people of God we were, would not be considered to be part of the people of Israel. So we are all outsiders that have been welcomed into God's community of faith, into God's family. So how are we then to deny that same community, that same love from others? Even if it means they're Patriots fans, even if it means they're rooting for Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, we're still called to share God's love and God's peace with them. No matter what, we must reach out in love beyond our comfort zones. And that's a little trite, I know. That's a little bit the Super Bowl. But who knows? I don't know exactly how God is going to tug on your heart, is calling you, is speaking to you. To whom is God calling you to share God's message of radical love and forgiveness on this day or in the weeks ahead. Something I think we should reflect about as we go forth from this place. How is God calling you to share God's love, even to somebody you don't like, even to somebody who is your enemy? But God is calling you in that way. And along the way, we could face a certain rejection, I think, like Jesus did. We might be worried about facing that rejection. You know, it seems like things were going downhill for him quite a bit. They were actually about to throw him off of a hill in the passage that we heard today. But Jesus just calmly passed through their midst and went on his way. So we can kind of take that example for ourselves. Sometimes we might need to be as smooth and as breezy as Jesus was when we face that kind of rejection in our life. Just brush it off. Just brush it off and keep going. Keep our eyes on the prize. 
Keep our eyes on Christ's example for us. Good news is bad news is good news again. That's kind of like the story of Jesus' ministry in a nutshell right there. I'm thinking of when Jesus was going up on a donkey and he entered Jerusalem. Remember that on Palm Sunday? All the people were cheering him. Oh, this is amazing. The Messiah is coming. And then what happened soon after that? Bad news. Good news. And then there was some bad news. It wasn't quite the Messiah that they were hoping for. And so he ended up getting crucified. But we know the end of that story. Of course, we know the end of that story. It does not stop with that bad news. The story continues with good news that is good for each one of us. That God's love is unconditional for us. That God's forgiveness is open to us no matter what happens in this world. God is going to be there for us. That's the power and the story of the resurrection. So let us go forth from this place and be bold to share this good news that has touched our lives again and again. Even if things look a little bit sour for a moment or two, we know that the good news will ultimately prevail. That we can trust in God as our strength and our refuge, and we can live in Christ's love for all people. May God bless you this day and this week to be bold in following Christ and sharing that message of love. Amen.